Happy Monday, everyone, and happy Memorial Day. This is Martha with Nature Niche, and this week I want to share another one of my favorite woodland wildflowers, wild geranium, or uh, geranium maculatum. It is one of four species of geranium, um, also a common name is cranes bill, that we have here in the state of Michigan. And this is the largest with the largest showiest flowers that are about an inch across. Habitat for this really beautiful uh, perennial forb includes rich deciduous forests, especially moist microsites along streams, um, wet hollows, and swamps. And it's less often found in upland oak hickory forests. Um, it's also occurring in savannas, meadows, seeps, and rocky glades across its range. In Michigan, that's the southern two-thirds of the lower peninsula and a few places in the upper peninsula. And this species occurs across the eastern half of the United States and Canada. As far as cultivation goes, it is one of the easiest woodland wildflowers to cultivate. Um, and it's pretty bomb proof. It, it's one of those species um, that I recommend frequently to folks just getting into um, wildflower gardening and using native plants in their landscapes. It tolerates a range of light conditions um, from uh, full sun to fairly deep shade and uh, average soil conditions. It won't take it extremely dry or really super wet standing water, but anything in between it does quite well. It prefers um, part sun and rich loamy soils that have abundant organic matter. Uh, this plant has a stout rootstock that produces um, rhizomes that are very high in tannins and it creeps slowly to form mounded colonies. Um, so it, it plays well with others. I have it planted here with maidenhair fern, Canada anemone, um, wild strawberry and uh, black-eyed Susan, Rudbeckia fulgida, and it, it does quite well, ooh, and um, big leaf aster as well. So um, it's not too aggressive of a spreader, but it fills in nicely, um, spreading slowly, and it also readily reseeds itself. And this species you can um, divide up as it matures and expands in um, early spring or in fall. And you can um, collect the seed about a month after it flowers and you want to put that um, in a paper bag um, so that when the capsule dries, um, you, you have the, the seeds contained. Overall, this plant gets um, one to two feet tall, so it is one of our shorter statured native plants as well. And it blooms for about a month. Um, in Michigan here, that's usually in May into early June. As far as identification goes, um, there are loosely clustered basal leaves and then a pair of opposite leaves on the flowering stalk. So here's, move the oak flowers out of the way. Here are those pair of opposite leaves. And the leaves are um, palmately lobed with uh, five wedge-shaped lobes and those lobes are further divided sometimes into secondary lobes and rounded teeth. Just for comparison, this does look a lot like Canada anemone, but um, that species has much more sharp pointed uh, lobes and teeth and is a little bit more dissected. And the wild geranium leaf has a little bit more flesh to it um, as well as these very characteristic impressed veins, making it look sort of reptilian, I think. And you can see those veins really distinctly on the leaf underside. Overall, the um, plant is uh, coarsely hairy. The stems can have hairs. The leaves have oppressed hairs. Um, but yeah, it's really pretty mounded foliage. And then the flowers um, are formed um, in slightly floppy um, corums or umbels. 
with two to five flowers per um, inflorescence. And occasionally it might just have a single flower um, if it's stressed or very young. Each flower is approximately one to one and a quarter inches across um, with five rounded pale purple pink petals. Um, and those have radiating veins on the petals that serve as nectar guides uh, to the center of the flower for pollinators. Um, the flowers, besides the five petals, they have 10 stamens with pale yellow anthers and a single pistil that has five um, carpels or chambers. The pistil elongates into an inch, inch and a half um, fruit that looks like a crane's bill, so hence that common name. You can see some of that fruit. Mine's been blooming for several weeks, so you can see that fruit and that long crane's bill shape starting to form there. Those are an inch, inch and a half long, and uh, the carpels will curl backwards and upwards and fling or hurl the seeds um, like a catapult away from the mother plant. So that's one way that it, that it spreads. And that's why when you collect the seed um, for propagation, you wanna get it as it's darkening to the black color, but before the seeds have flung away, um, grab those, put those in a paper bag to finish drying. Um, and that way you can actually capture the seeds. If they're already split open, it's a little too late for seed collection on this plant. Um, as far as faunal associations go, this plant provides really great early season pollinator support. It provides pollen and nectar to bumblebees, mason bees, cuckoo bees, um, and several other types of bees, flies, butterflies, and skippers. The um, Foliage is food for different kinds of beetles and bugs, um, and it's a host plant for several species of moths. Uh, for mammals, um, eastern chipmunks are known to eat the seeds of this plant, and white-tailed deer occasionally browse on the foliage. Um, it also provides nice shade for small mammals and um, other herbs in your landscape. And uh, historical human uses, uh, Native Americans tra tra traditionally use this plant to help treat um, diarrhea um, as a topical treatment for open wounds um, and as a mouthwash for different mouth disorders like um, canker sores and um, sore throats. And the early settlers used the root with its high tannins to um, help tan hides as well. So. I really do love this plant. Um, it's one of the, the first things blooming in my, my woodland gardens. It makes a great um, shade garden, woodland edge, uh, type species, naturalizes really well too, um, and woodland gardens. And uh, I just wanted to dedicate this post to my grandfather, uh, Conrad Yoakum. I, um, Got to see this plant a lot in Bird Hills Park where we used to go for walks and we lost him a week ago at 104, but I thought uh, doing this species and doing it on Memorial Day since he served in World War II uh, was very fitting. So Papa, this one's for you.